So my name is John Nolan. I'm with Reliant Security out of Grand Junction, Colorado. And I'm pretty close to Wayne, about an hour and so minutes away. Um, I do total building security is what I've uh, based my company off of. So I do locksmith alarms. We're focusing on cameras today. I do access control, automation, both business and home. And then I help people look up um, look up landscaping stuff. So what we can do to use landscaping as a security feature. Uh, the agenda today is gonna be 45 minutes to an hour, and then we're gonna have some fun along the way. I'm gonna explain the differences between IP and analog systems. We're gonna go through my note files. I have a lot of note files. I have a lot of pictures for that, but we're gonna focus on a few that are really important to cameras. We're gonna talk about proper installation. I'm gonna talk about the tools that are needed, where to get the stuff. We're gonna go over some branding stuff and then we'll follow up with a questions and answers. And I need to pause for just a moment. I'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna hop right in here. Um, I guess a little bit more about me. Uh, my, I, my educational background is actually in technology integration. So I don't believe that um, technology should fight you. I think it should work for you. So I built systems that work with people and I troubleshoot those so that they continue to work with people. My uh, certification is actually in Cisco. It's, I'm a Cisco certified network associate. Uh, that it, that's actually expired, but it's uh, it's where I come from. I designed camera systems and electronic access and a few other things for Triad and Exter from 15 to 17. And then from 2017 to present, I've been doing locksmith, cameras, alarms, access control. And if you watch what Wayne and I do together, if it can't, if someone says it can't be done, uh, we decide to prove them wrong. So we're gonna talk about this IP versus analog. On the left, we have a switch. I'm pretty sure everybody notices that as like a internet switch. Um, that's actually all an IP camera system is. It's a bunch of computers on a network talking to a bigger computer. So um, when, we, when we hook up IP cameras, they, they need to be powered. So that switch actually provides both PoE power and the data communication. On the very far left of that switch is a yellow cable. Uh, I like to define which cables are for power. Uh, that one actually differentiates from, uh, that's actually a 24 volt power versus a 48 volt, which is what PoE runs off of. And that powers in a, an antenna. On the left side, we have an analog recorder, a DVR, a digital video recorder. So it takes that analog feed and pushes it over into, uh, a digital format on a hard drive. And the box below that, that gray box right down here, is a power supply. Analog cameras have to have two cables going. They may have to have a power cable, and then they have to have a video cable. So it's uh, quite important to have uh, 12 volt power. Some of them run on 24 volt AC power, so the cameras, there are a couple different types of, of power for cameras out there. Uh, biggest difference between analog and IP came out with uh, how clear the image is. Obviously the image on the right hand side, you can read the license plate from a, a distance away. On the left, it's not so great. The left picture there is probably between 700 TV line and maybe almost two megapixel. Um, Analog systems have been traditionally rated in TV lines. They have some HD 1080p analog systems out there that are, you know, rated or claimed to give out better than IP, but really it's, it's just a mix and match of, uh, of clarity. It depends on what uh, recorder you're using, what manufacturer, that kind of thing. Here's another image inside where we can see this fellow over here almost looks like he has a beard and um, he doesn't, he just has a goatee on his chin there. 
which is interesting. So you can see the, the difference inside. The left side is, is what we always see coming out of the feeds from banks like, hey, you, uh, uh, you robbed this bank, here's a picture of the guy. Well, we can't really, you, you can't really tell who that is uh, on the, on the right-hand side there, very clear. Um, again, we're gonna go over this diagram here. On the left is an analog camera system. So you see the power to the cameras and you have the blue lines for the, for the video feed coming out into the DVR. And then the DVR goes into the router or firewall appliance. Sometimes they go into switches in a network perspective, it actually go into a switch before the firewall router appliance and then out to the internet. And then you can access it with your mobile devices, remote PC, that kind of thing. On the right hand side, all the green, it's all one type of cable. So it's all cat five or cat six cabling that runs the camera system with IP. There is a maximum distance of 328 feet. That is not a camera specific. That is actually any kind of category five cabling, any kind of IP communication will not run over 328 feet reliably. So if you use a general rule of thumb, 300 feet maximum, you're fine. So it's 100 meters is what that is. That goes into a PoE switch. That PoE switch uh, both gives out the power and uh, communicates with the camera so the camera can send video feed out and then on the other side you can access the camera directly without actually having to access the NVR so you can see what's going on with it and that type of thing whereas with an analog system you do have to access the DVR either through a monitor or other like a remote phone that kind of thing in order to see the camera signal so then that runs down into, you see their local machine, router hub, uh, the NVR network video recorder. Again, these are these IP cameras, they're, they run on an IP, that's internet protocol. And that is it's basically what computers talk to. That's how we're talking today over, over web. So they're just tiny little computers sitting on a network talking to a server, which is the NVR. So this is a multi-sensor IP camera. Multi-sensor means that there are several video feeds coming out of one single camera. So that one camera up there actually has four sensors in it. And along the bottom there, you can see the different views it's seeing. This one sees around a corner. And the feeds are actually a little mixed up on this particular one. The first feed on the left is the loading dock, and then it goes to where the red truck is sitting over there. That's my, that's my work, work vehicle there. And then it goes to the, the row of white car, you know, starting out with that white car and going down there. So this is a little backwards. And then there's a camera that points straight down that you don't see. And that one looks down so nobody can hide underneath the camera. Here's another view of the uh, types of multi-sensor cameras there are. On the red brick wall over here, there's a traditional IP camera sitting there. It actually looks out into a parking lot. And then to the right there, we have another one of those multi-sensor panoramic views. It goes around and looks down. And then on the right picture there is another multi-sensor. It has two cameras in it running on a single cable. And those look pretty well down that entire 180 degree view. It's just in a smaller area, so we didn't actually need a, a, a five or a four sensor unit in that one. This is what the inside of those multi-sensor units look like. So you can see there are four different cameras sitting in there. The ones going around the top there, uh, those three that kind of face out, those are 2.8 millimeter lenses. And they see a pretty, pretty good view. They're about 90 degrees. So they will see in a corner in a room, they'll see the entire room. The one on the bottom is a 2.1 millimeter lens, which is about 115, 112 degrees, somewhere out in there. It almost, it's just on the borderline of giving an IP, um, uh, kind of a, um, a fish eye, excuse me, a fish eye uh, kind of feel there. So, and then of course on the right, there's the cover for that. All right, and then Ericont is really cool. So these are Ericont cameras and the Ericont cameras are 
they're a really good camera. They're pretty expensive. Aircon kind of gave the multi-sensor camera its its name really. Uh, they, they're the ones that came out, patented it, and then um, and then went out and, and now we, we get them all from Aircon is where I buy them from. There's very few manufacturers that have done it correctly in the past. Um, this is, their, they came out with it. So I figured they're probably the best at the multi-sensor view. I've seen Axis has some multi-sensor view cameras too. And they're really proud of their product as well. But Aircon, um, the price point on these cameras, I guess I should talk about that. They're not cheap. Uh, none of the cameras I work with are super cheap. Um, so when, when I look at, at selecting different cameras, we, we, we go with the best cameras. And this is at a hospital. They, need, they needed something to cover a wide area here. Everything in green was pretty well not covered before. And they have a, um, an emergency room entrance over here. And people were complaining that the security guards on site were pushing people down and beating them up and whatever they could do to get money from the hospital. They were, they were really, they were really pushing it. So it was a bit of a, a cluster out in front of there. It looks like we have some other people trying to join. So I'm trying to get them in here too. All right, so that was an addition. Um, something to keep in mind too, Aircon. Another reason they're expensive is they'll actually help you plan this out. They're the ones that those the ones that actually drew out this plan, and the red lines lead over to a parts list. And so when you're when you're selecting some of these cameras, talk to the manufacturer if you're unsure of how to plan something out. The manufacturers are more than happy to come in and to help design a system. The green areas just mean you're going to have a decent video there. The yellow, uh, you'll see a little yellow boxes around there. That means that that's where you're going to get really, really good video. So that's uh, part of their design feature on that. So the next few images are, we're going to talk about bad installations. I don't believe, I believe in if you see something bad and we show you that it's bad and then we show the good thing that you're probably probably going to be helpful. So the, these are really bad things. So on the left here, we have a camera uh, next to a box and the box is plastic. And then we have some wires going in there and they have some kind of silicone. You can even see one of the wires here is actually split open uh, as it's going into that box. So it's, it's really, really important that when you run if you're going to put a, a box out there to cover up your cable connections like on the top center here we have <laughs> electrical tape this is all off the same site by the way all these cameras are one single site so they did a plethora of things here that were were just terrible but so you don't use electrical tape to cover up your connections it sounds like a great idea but it's terrible uh, even this black cable that's here isn't technically the best outdoor rated cable to be running um, but more importantly, if you're going to put everything into a box, mount the camera to the box and then put all the wires and its connections inside the box. So this is, it just looks a little sloppy when you're running the camera cable outside of the box into it. Just in my opinion, it looks a little, a little sloppy on that side. Bottom middle though, that's, that's just, it's all zip tied together. It's zip tied to the roof line there. That's actually, that big old bundle of cable wound up falling off because the zip ties, while they were UV rated, the UV index in my area is really high. So it'll it'll burn things really, really bad. And that's that is the unfortunate side. It just it fell off after a while. The one on the right there, of course, you see the box sitting on the roof, and then you uh, you see the cable running into it on the roof. That box is going to get flooded. So whatever they were trying to protect in there, that's that's not being protected. Minute it snows, uh, there's a really really good rain, that kind of stuff. It's it's just going to flow right into that box, and then it's going to destroy whatever you were trying to protect in it. 
So again, these are bad installations. I see a couple of people coming in here new. We're talking about the, the note files right now. These are all the don't do this. It's really, really, really important. Most important thing of all is to, is to protect the cable and run the right kind of cable. This blue cable is actually running some, we have some um, camera feeds running through this Cat5 cable, which is very, very common. What's not common in this particular setup is the fact that this is indoor rated cable. This cable has been on the roof for, I believe, five years. And that was supposed to be an upgrade. It's supposed to be outdoor rated from what the customer was told. Really, really good customer of mine. He said, yeah, oh, the guy ran outdoor rated cable. Nowhere on this, on the inside where it's actually still good and flexible, does it say outdoor UV rated? It's an indoor rated cable. And this is what happens to indoor rated cable over, this one's been up there five years. I've seen them two years where they're, they're just, they, they break like this, they become very, very brittle. The sun just bakes them. The rain, you know, it soaks into them. It just destroys that uh, PVC shielding and then it just it eats straight through. And then, it, then you have this. When, I, when, you, when you come across something like this, don't touch it though. Worst thing you could do is be inspecting it, grab a hold of that thing, and then it breaks, it just disintegrates in your hand, which it, this cable was just flaking apart. And we, when we did replace it, it, it just flaked completely apart. It just fell, it just destroyed itself. It was, there was nothing, nothing good came of that cable right there. And I get really upset when I see these kind of things. So um, especially when it's, it's done by a, a alleged professional. So by the, by the expensive cable, this cable here is probably $80, $90 a box for that indoor rated stuff. Outdoor rated cable, I pick up a spool of it. It's direct berry outdoor UV rated cable. It's a good tough coating on the outside for when I do need to run outside. And um, it's about $200, $215 for a thousand feet. So there is a cost difference, but if you're gonna run things outside, make sure it's the right stuff. Here's another couple things yeah, here. question for you. Yep, go ahead. What would you, do you use conduit outside? So yeah, I was about to get to that out on the next piece there, but yeah, I use metal conduit. So we use metal conduit outside. And if you can't run the conduit, get an electrician, get somebody who runs conduit, have them come out and run it for you. Um, if you're running two pieces of cable, half inch conduit sounds pretty good until you realize maybe your customer is going to upgrade stuff down the road. I actually don't lay anything less than three quarter inch. And that's because if I'm running cable or conduit down, let me go back a slide here. So on this big black bundle of cables here, it's still in this condition. This wasn't taken, but I think just this past, um, maybe this past fall. So what our plan is, we're gonna run the conduit down the face of this. It's probably gonna be, or we're gonna run it up on top of here, I believe is what we're, what the plan is. It's gonna be a pretty big piece of conduit to house all the camera feeds here. But on the face of this building, because this is actually down the short side, this is a, a storage unit, on the face of this building, there are other places that we know that we're gonna put cameras in the future. So we're gonna drop boxes along the way and we're gonna big, put a bigger piece of conduit down there that's needed because we already know we're gonna be running more wire at this one time to, to drop extra stuff along the way. So when you guys are out looking at this stuff, if the customer just wants to fix the cabling issue and then not fix you know, the bad cameras if they're giving out really poor quality, but they're just, it's not within their budget, then you can still lay the this, this same category five cable. And we'll talk about later how, how that works out in our tool section. But yes, everything, we, everything I do when I come into these gets run into conduit and it's always EMT, conduit it's always metal conduit with uh, outdoor rated fittings you don't want to run plastic because or the pvc stuff will just start drooping after a while and look really really ugly so and then with the conduit you can run indoor rated cable that's that's the best part about it you can use the less expensive cable so this is on the side of a um, another building here and we have a 
a goofy little birdhouse sitting up here. I'll tell you, um, the guy who put that birdhouse in thought that that was just the best feature ever on this. And while it protected the radio and a couple other things inside there from most of the problems, obviously the power cable sitting outside is a big no-no. And it's just, I don't even know what this bundle of wire here was. This was uh, about two years ago when we replaced this. So this bundle of wires was really kind of goofy. So, but they were, they were having problems with the video feed and this this became the culprit, the power. I mean, it's, it's just, it's not good to have this kind of stuff running outside. Our solution was to put a box in, um, a, uh, it'll be in our, in our good photos here, but there's a, basically an outdoor rated NEMA box that goes in here. We had a, an antenna running on it and then um, we shot this stuff over Wi-Fi. This is a Wi-Fi analog device, but again, they're, they're kind of, uh, I think they're a little unreliable. And on the right hand side there, that's a power box. And just this mess of wires here, Again, this is this is a bad installation because we just have wires. It looks, almost looks like this thing just vomited it out here. And then you see on there, you have, there's a couple wire nuts sitting there. I never use wire nuts on anything. If anything, I'll use um, some uh, gelled beans is what they're called. They're just a little blue connector. It has some gel in it and you crimp it. You crimp the wires together. But most of your power supplies for analog systems have screw down terminals. So, and you can put, if you're running two cameras off of one channel, as long as they don't exceed one amp, it should be fine or whatever the power rating is per channel. You should be able to put a couple, maybe four different wires on that one block. So there is there is really no reason for this. And then you see these red and black wires hanging out here. These red and black wires are powered and it's, it just looks really super tacky. So good clean installs is what we're looking for. So now we're gonna move into the proper installations. So on the left here, if you come into a, an IP or an analog system, you see that stuff on the left? Well, those are that's not correctly terminated. These are screw terminals with a couple crimp ones in here. And these are bad connectors. They're really cheap though. So the screw on connectors are, are very cheap, which is why a lot of people use them, but they, they definitely don't look very good and they usually have a lot of issues. Anytime I come in and, and someone says, yeah, camera two just isn't working very well, nine times out of 10, it's all cabling. Any, any trouble you have with any camera system or most systems in general that are electronic, you start looking at the cabling and that's usually where the problems are. Uh, again, my IT background really comes through on that because 90, I'd say a good 90% of the time I come into any type of troubleshooting, whether it's a computer problem, a video problem. Most problems are due to these uh, these connectors just just being terrible. So so it gets to be you know, again it gets to be pretty pretty bad. So if you come in and and see these these are things you want to be replacing. And this, these things do just fall out for no reason. On the right or on the left, oh, far left, maybe bottom connector there, there's a tiny little bit of white sitting there. Yeah, that's um, that thing's falling out. And really on most of these, if you tug on the cable, that just pop right out. On the right hand side, these are crimp on connectors. These are a Belden product. They're very expensive, about $2.50 to, uh, you know, two and a half to $3 a, a connector. But these connectors, once you put on, you can damn near hang that DVR off of that and it will off of one cable and, and it does not come out very easily. It looks great. It has a good tight fit, um, clean and happy. That's the, that's the biggest thing. They're clean looking, they're happy, really good solid connections. And you don't have any problems with these connectors most of the time. I say most of the time because we're human, we're putting them together, there's going to be an error somewhere. On the left, we have this really nice network set up here. There are six cameras on this, uh, well, are there six? Yeah, there's six cameras on this one. That gray cable that's coming out here, that's a UV outdoor rated cable. 
and I've had really good luck with that stuff too. It's not direct berry, but it's it definitely holds up hmm, probably about five, six years. So we put we put the outdoor rated stuff that were most outdoor rated cable is gonna last five or six years and then you have to replace it. So in this area anyways. The white cables are indoor rated and this is how a outdoor rated box looks when we install it. It's it's really clean and pretty. We cut the cables pretty well to length right there. We might, if if we have a customer thinking they might move a camera, we might put a little spool of cable in here, but for most cases, this is a permanent installation. So that's the way this permanent installation should look. On the right hand side here, um, you remember that picture where the where the vomited wire was? This is another um, one of those where the wire was just puked out. It it looked terrible. And it was coming in where that Y splits right up here. It was, it looked way worse than that. It it's just did it just fall? It was like it was falling off the wall. All pushed in through the front. As you see, the wire comes into the side of the box there. There's usually knockouts on those for the top and bottom and sides. You just knock those out. And then the video cable comes down on the right hand side there and into the recorder. So this is this is typically what a really good clean installation looks like. When you're pulling cable, you have to get a little creative sometimes. The top right hand corner there is um, we I, I look for hot spots. When you're pulling cable, you want to make sure to keep the wire safe. So I took this spring water water bottle here, I cut off the end, shoved it in my hole up here, and then pushed the or pulled the wire through there. So what that does is it protects the wire from rubbing on that metal and burning or cutting the wire. So it, it's, it's very handy that way. It's really important to keep the wire protected as you're pulling it. And if you're pulling the wire and, it, and it's, it's really, really tough to pull, you gotta stop and figure out what's going on because protecting the wire during a good installation is, is very, very key. So I really, really like to make things pretty. And on the left-hand side there, this is a, uh, these are Cat6 cables coming into a patch panel and then those will eventually drop down to a, a DVR. So on a lot of permanent installations, it's good to have these go into a patch panel. You don't have to, they can plug directly into the switch, like over here on the right-hand side, all the cameras come directly into the switch that way. This is okay on the left-hand side. That's really best practice for most computer networks, but cameras kind of fall in the middle of computers and, and so, and on the middle side here, this is actually a Wi-Fi setup. So with my computer background and a few other things, uh, we do networking and this Wi-Fi antenna actually connects to a few other cameras and those cameras all get routed into the switch and pop into that router down there. A side effect of installing Wi-Fi cameras is that you typically have to have better Wi-Fi through a house or a building. This was a um, private building here and they have three story house. This is in the basement. So each level was actually getting really poor Wi-Fi signal throughout the house. And they wanted cameras in places that we could not run category six or category five cable very easily. So we increased the Wi-Fi in the area. As a side effect, they got way better Wi-Fi signal on their, on their phones and computers than they ever had before and they were super happy and the cameras were happy and everybody's happy. So on the right hand side there, that little white box at the bottom that almost looks like a Contigo cup, that is the recorder, a local video recorder from our alarm.com. And alarm.com is really, really cool because they do that little recorder and then everything records to the cloud. They have some really good analytics on their cameras. So you can tell the difference between a human, a car, um, there's, there's a lot of really cool things that alarm.com does. They also make it really, really easy for you to install their stuff. When you plug the cameras in and you go into your app, as long as that phone on your, on the app is, uh, you know, on the same network, it'll identify those cameras and allow you to attach them straight to that person's account. So alarm.com doesn't just do alarm systems. They don't just do cameras. They do a lot of things all built together for that total building security uh, solution there. So it's, it's really 
good to find uh, all inclusive package and then find little pieces that are kind of separate from there. The boxes here in the middle, these are ubiquity. And so is this antenna up here, these are our ubiquity. Uh, ubiquity is a really, really good product for, uh, they're very ex inexpensive. So they're, they're really good for networking, really easy to set up. And if someone is requiring, um, like if I'm helping another installer out, I can say, yeah, I can ship you out a system, completely packaged the whole bit, all programmed, uh, the increased Wi-Fi, do whatever you want. The only thing they have to do is is uh, terminate wires. So um, I'm going to pause for a moment. Are there any questions? And feel free to unmute your mic and and ask. I have one, sir. Sure, go ahead. About uh, when you call out the electrician to run the conduit. So you would run all the wires, and then you know have the electrician come in a different day and run the conduit or you haven't run the conduit first or we always run the conduit first yeah so um if you're not a huge conduit runner you just call up the electrician and say hey you know i'm installing it's really first of all it's really good to get a good electrician on your team so i have three electricians in my area that i've made friends with so if I can't use one, I use the other. And I just tell them, hey, look, you know, I've got this project coming up. Can you come out here and give me an estimate on how much it would be to run this size conduit? And once you line it out for them, they know what you're doing. And then they can give you a price. So when you call the electrician, if I were you, I would actually take the electrician out to coffee and meet with them first to make sure it's something that they can, they can provide, a service they can provide for you. Um, I do a lot of business networking in town. So I, the three electricians that I use, I know really well. I've got a couple other electricians here in town that I've met. And sometimes uh, people will call the electricians and ask them, hey, we want a camera system put in or electronic access or people call other industries for weird things sometimes. And if they don't have anybody to push it through, they're just gonna find someone else in the phone book. So making friends with your local electricians is important and then if you have them come out and do the conduit they're a little more likely to refer you because you've given them work does that make sense yes sir that does also uh, are you a one-man show or do you have multiple people that like you are that are your employees so i am a single man show and then i use like wayne winton uh, we bounce things off of each other there's um, a couple other people here in town that that I'll subcontract work out to that kind of thing. But right now I'm a one man show. I actually started this company in um, August of 2018. So I'm not a very old company. I've just been doing a lot of this stuff a long time and just events led up to me being out on my own, which has been really, really fun. So, so this is something that the one man show can do. That's why I use things like alarm.com because uh, it's, a lot, I like things that are automated and work and I don't have to mess with again. Awesome, thank you to help. Sure, no problem. Any other questions? Let me look in our chat over here. John, yeah, you had a mentioned um, like a wireless network for wireless cameras. Uh, I'm assuming these run off of a, the cameras connect via Wi-Fi. Is this a mesh system or uh, are these camera, do these cameras have their own power source? So wireless cameras, um, the term wireless would, would uh, in, or, you know, you'd assume that, oh yeah, these are a completely wireless battery powered camera. Um, no, they, they do have some out there like with the, um, Oh, what are they? Names eluding me right now, but some of the cameras are straight up um, wireless, as in you plug a battery into them the whole bit. My version of wireless is actually kind of a hybrid, if you will. It's either powered with a PoE injector sitting on a wall, or it's, um, in the case of these others, there's like a little power brick and it's a little 12 volt power transformer that pops in. And then you're able to um, to power it, and then wirelessly communicate over to it. So 
So when when we say wireless, it's running over the Wi-Fi, the 802.11 um, Wi-Fi type stuff. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it answers the wireless um, que uh, a question I had there. Do do some of those? You still you're still running a power source though to each camera. Uh, yes. Separately, correct. Yes. It's really important. So when you talk with your customers about a wireless camera system, it's really important you let them know we still have to run power to the camera unless you want to go and recharge those batteries every other day. In a business environment, completely wireless systems. Um, man, I'm going to look up, I'm going to Google this real quick because I know I'm just forgetting the name of them. Can you post uh, or like send an email about all your different suppliers or something you use just because I can't remember all these names. Sure, we'll talk about those here in a minute too. So um, I, I do have a couple suppliers that I use and then I'll, I'll, we'll talk a little bit more about those here in a moment. I've actually got a slide on that here. Anyways, the, the, cam the, wire, the completely Wi-Fi, you guys have seen them. Some of the Nest are wire-free or wire-free. Um, Arlo, that's the name of the one I was looking at, Arlo. An Arlo system has batteries you put in them. And recently I had a customer come and say, hey, we want this Arlo system put in. I'll install whatever the customer wants, um, except for Ring. Ring, I, I will install those very, very begrudgingly because Another thing about IP cameras that you guys need to be really, really aware of is how good their security is because we're all security professionals. And if we install something that somebody can hack into easily, that's, that's not very secure in my opinion. So um, ring cameras, ring doorbell, even some of the Nest product is, is kind of sketchy. So um, knowing those different things, if you guys want to get, since we're talking about suppliers, if, you're into a, if you want to get into a camera system, read up on it. Uh, hike vision everybody i'm pretty sure everyone's heard of hike vision hike vision um their systems are very susceptible to hacking it's a chinese product most of the chinese products are very susceptible to hacking some of them have things built in so that china can access them someone from china can get into them um that's kind of been reduced a little bit in in recent years past couple years they've really cracked down on it but um, so just being really mindful of what products are being used for what and how secure they are. So Arlo systems, battery powered, um, anything battery powered, especially in a business is just bad news uh, because you're going to be recharging those things all the time. Again, this client wanted me to come in and install this, uh, this Arlo system. And she got up on a Sunday where she was actually having me come out on a Sunday. So her workers didn't see me putting this stuff in and we wound up meeting and she needed an estimate on a wired system because all eight of her cameras at her house were lined up on the kitchen counter just recharging and she figured well that happens every every three days or every four days out at her place and she says yeah nobody's going to be getting up and pulling these down so if the customer if your customer says hey wireless in our business or home the homes aren't aren't really bad but especially at a business area you just might want to remind them somebody's gonna have to recharge those batteries so you're definitely gonna to want to plug that thing in there are some wi-fi enabled cameras though plug in a wall wart or have your electrician run over you know a power cable or something like that or an outlet near the near the camera and, and it can be fine from there so any other questions on that All right, we're gonna go moving into tool time here. I'm pretty sure some of you guys might get a kick out of that. So tools, here's the analog tools. Um, you'll see this red handled tool on the, on the right hand side here. This is a platinum tool. It's, um, this is what crimps on those Belden crimp connectors here. So that tool is about 80, between 60 and $80. I found it on Amazon, I think for 62 bucks. Um, this one I bought from my local supplier. Allcom Data is who I use for my local supplier for as much as I can. And then um, some places like Intermountain Lock Security Supply, Flake, um, some of those other people might carry some of this stuff. Get a really, really good crimping tool. This one's adjustable. So the Belden uh, gets pushed in a certain distance. On the end here, you see this little black ring. And that's the piece that grabs onto the cable. 
and and crimps everything together. So when you get this piece here and stick it into the tool, it's important that this plunger, when this when that break, when that hand piece is all the way down, pushes in far enough that it crimps properly, but not too far so it breaks the, the connector. On the top right here, we have our cable stripper for these an this uh, analog cable. Analog cable is um, either RG6 or RG59. It's most commonly coming in a Siamese wire. So you'll have these two connectors coming out of the cable. You'll have this um, an analog connector coming out, which is what our Belden piece is there. And then um, you'll have your power terminal or pigtail coming out. Um, these are the two pigtails for the powers. You have a male and female. Oddly enough, the one on the left is not male, it's a female connector, and the one on the right is a, a male connector. Um, the connectors are <laughs> determined by the stinger inside this sheath here, which is kind of, so they're a little backwards, and just making, make sure when you talk with your suppliers, you want to get both of them, but see which one they're calling male and which one they're calling female. Some of them are a little different. So this stripper here just um, pushes out the, um, it just, it strips off uh, the cable. So you have the stinger in the middle, there's a piece of insulation and I don't have a picture of a, a stripped analog cable. I honestly, I don't run a lot of them. I, I more fix the problem. I don't actually run analog cable anymore. Instead uh, of Siamese, I run Cat5. On the top middle part here, we have these two, or this is a, uh, it's called a ballon. Over on the left here, you see the, the video ballons. It goes from Cat5 to an analog signal. And they're about 25 to $30 a pair um, for, you wanna make sure you get the HD version of these. Otherwise the cameras won't, they do some weird things. But what it does is it takes a two or three of the, or two of the pairs, converts it over to an, uh, an analog video signal. And then the other, um, the other three pairs of Cat5 or Cat6 wire, it's actually using for power. So it's, um, the, the main reason for these is when you run Cat5, if you're doing an analog system, like you're repairing an analog system and they're not ready to upgrade to IP cameras, it's too expensive because running new cable and all everything else, maybe the expense is just too much. And you tell them, look, we'll run Cat5 cable, we'll make it so where your current cameras work, and then when you're ready to, up, to upgrade to IP, then we just unplug these little balans, and then we put on the new camera and plug everything into a switch. So those video balans are very, very, uh, very cool because they're not very expensive. And a, a good roll of Siamese cable is going to run about 183 to 215 bucks for a thousand feet. For um, for Cat5, that's our cost. That's a dealer cost. That's the installer cost. So when I sell Siamese cable, or when I have sold it in the past to people, it's been you know I'll charge $400 for that spool because you got to make money somewhere, and typically that's it. So on the Category Five side, though. You're you're looking about eighty to ninety five dollars, maybe a hundred bucks per per thousand feet of Cat five, depending on where you get it from, and the quality of it. If you buy cheap Cat five cable from Lowe's or Home Depot, or just if you're paying fifty bucks for a box, more than likely it's going to be a copper clad aluminum cable, and you want the solid aluminum cable. IP stuff does not like copper clad anything, so. Whether it's copper clad steel or aluminum, it's just, it's bad news for IP cameras. Uh, analog cameras, they might get away with it for a little bit, but just don't go cheap on any of your stuff. That's the main message here for that. Did you say you prefer the solid aluminum cable? Always 100%, uh, no, I'm sorry, solid copper. I may have said aluminum. Copper. Yeah, copper, solid copper cable. Everything needs to be copper on the power side for sure. Um, a lot of the a lot of the Siamese cable is actually copper clad steel or copper clad aluminum, and all it is it's an aluminum wire with copper painted on the outside of it. So some of the Siamese cable comes out that way. Any questions about this about the analog tool so far? Okay, we'll move on.
All right, so these are my IP tools. I do have a couple pieces in here that are not usable for the typical installer. Um, in my bucket up here, there's this yellow handled tool. We're not going to talk about that one. Uh, that is a that is a very those are those that tool is hard to use with the cables on the outer sides of these small boxes here. Um, the blue handled tool with the red. This thing almost looks like a fish to me. I don't know why it looks like some kind of fish with big teeth. But this connector here on my patch panel slide back here. Let me go back to that. There we go. There we are. So on the left here where these pieces come in, this is what this is the yellow handled tool deal. So if you're creating, if you're putting stuff into a patch panel, uh, maybe you're coming in and adding things to a patch panel and you want to use those connectors. Um, that's what this, this fish type tool here, um, this is the connector it uses. And when you put the wire in here, it's got little, it's got little metal prongs in here. It's really cool. It'll retain the cable. So when you put everything in, it snaps in and then you snap it into that crimper and you crimp down that it, it terminates and cuts and everything all at the same time. But more importantly, if you let go of the of that connector, it just it doesn't fall off. It it's, it stays on there, which is really really cool. This is a an, a really cool tool to have in your arsenal if you're maybe someone's crushed one of your IP camera wires or a group of them, and you don't you, you need to get the cameras back up and running, but you definitely can't run all new cable at that moment. These are good to help create a splice that's that's adequate to. So you're taking one of these connectors and then one of these connectors on the bottom. This is an RJ45 mod plug, right? So this mod plug here plugs into this uh, female receptacle. So this is the RJ45. It's like, it's a female jack, right? Um, these plug in together. So you can make a temporary um, splice point in your cable. You, I say temporary, you wanna make sure it's temporary. Those splice points will cause trouble later. So that's the temporary is the important word there. So if a bunch of cables get cut by accident, this is a quick way to make a to make a uh, a splice in a in a cable. On the bottom here, we have our. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, do you use anything like dielectric grease to um, kind of no deal this? Okay. No, never use dielectric grease on this because <laughs> um, I I had uh, I had a, an installer do that once. Oh, this is going to be great. We're running this stuff outside. We'll put dielectric grease in there. It'll keep us from having to use the special little boot that comes with the camera that helps keep the moisture out, that stops the moisture from getting in. This is better. And it actually shorts out um, the, the connector. Those, the, the, terminal, the terminals on here are so close together, the dielectric grease, even though it's not very conductive, it conducts just enough or insulates the wires just enough to cause big problems. So yeah, that's a really, really good question. Don't use dielectric grease. That's uh, that should probably be in my don't files, but don't use dielectric grease. It's, it, it causes problems. Strippers and scissors, these are really cool. Um, the, stri the, the stripper on the right here is a really good one. They don't make it anymore, unfortunately. Com Cables is a really good brand of cables and they have a lot of really cool tools. Um, so this type of stripper here, it has a really thin blade on it. And when you're stripping category five cable, it's really important after you get done cutting the cable to look at the individual strands and make sure that none of them have been nicked. If the cable has been nicked, you're gonna wanna re-strip the, the wire and you know, cut that thing off and, and go down another, you know, cut, cut that inch or whatever you've cut off, cut that piece off and start back over any nicks inside of the of those uh, on the insulated pairs on the inside is, is going to cause problems later so on on future videos we're actually going go or future one of these presentations we'll go into uh, how to terminate this exactly what you should definitely look for when you're terminating this but these are just general overview of what the tools we need on the right i have a platinum tools pair of scissors you might be able to find them at home depot or lowe's for maybe a little bit less than what I paid for these. I think I paid like $25 for these scissors, but they have a couple little notches on there. Those are handy for certain things for stripping certain wires. 
definitely not category five wire, but more importantly, they have serrations on these blades and they cut the wire really crisp. Uh, if you try to take a normal pair of scissors and cut them or um, some other things, you know, you have, you have some, a couple problems with it. But with this, the, the serrations on there grip the cable, they cut the cable nice and straight and, and a happy straight cable cut is, is always best. Any questions on these real quick? Okay. So this is the mod plug. So this is just a real quick, this is how it's done. Um, you take your cables uh, or your wires after you've stripped off the cable here. Make sure you didn't nick any of these wires and you sort out the cable uh, by color. This, we, every everything is, set to the B standard. If you look up how to terminate Cat5 cable, there's an A and there's a B standard. 99% um, of what's running in the country is on the B standard. And the B standard just starts out orange and white and ends in this brown and, yet, and, and white here. On the, on the B standard, it actually starts out, I believe with this green pair, and then the orange pair are, are substituted where the green are. Everything else is the same, but those two swap out. In the old networking telecom days, um, that mattered because when you connected two switches together, two of the same same devices together, it you had to differentiate which one by the cable. It it had to know that it was different uh, than the other switch by the cable. But now it has what's called auto sensing, and so that's not important anymore. But if you do switch these around, you switch one side to A and one side to B, it may cause problems because the camera and switch won't know what's going on. So make sure that your color codes are the same on both sides. On the right-hand side here, we have the strands going through this mod plug. So this is really important on the slide back here. This is an easy RJ45 Pro. Um, it says HD, I don't know what the HD stands for because, um, but those mod plugs are between 60 and 75 cents each. Sometimes they get to be a little bit more expensive when you're working with Cat6 get these. Um, if you get a standard 25 cent connector and you try to do what we're doing over here, which is um, cutting this cable to fit into this mod plug, if you try to get this distance between where the cable is in this mod plug and where it needs to terminate here, which is about three eighths of an inch or so, or the thickness of my nail here, um, it's, it's very, very, very difficult. You're gonna get very frustrated. The easy for these easy jacks, the cable comes out the end here and you can double check your color code. A lot of the times uh, when you're using the other cable, the other connectors, when you push it in there, those cables aren't, aren't gonna stay perfectly in line every time. It's, they're gonna move and they're gonna move and you're gonna have about between 15 to 20 percent errors when you first start out. With the easy cables, you're down to about five percent errors. I have, I have an error margin uh, per year uh, comes out to about two and a half to five percent, and that's just from me not paying attention to the wire coming out of the end of the cable. I glance at it each each termination, and and then I know for sure my color code's good. The wires are seated properly. And also this white sheath on the cable is pushed completely into our connector. On the right hand side here, you'll see this is the proper way that these things should look. The sheath is pushed all the way in. You have the, uh, this in the stinger, you know, the inside of the cable here is, is all the way in here where it should be. Uh, it just, it looks really nice, almost factory, right? In the middle here, we see that same nice uniform pattern going on here. You can see the little metal um, tines there dig into the cables and, and they're, it's, it looks really, really clean. On the far left here, this tool, if, uh, if you're wondering how it crimps and trims off those hair or off that hair there, this tool has a little blade here. 
you do need to replace the blade periodically and the blades aren't super cheap they're i think they're like 15 or 20 bucks for a five pack or something like that but again you're you want to you want to make sure you invest in the right tools for this if you're going to make this your make this some of your bread and butter because if you get a cheap tool or you get the cheap connectors you're it's just going to cause your problems and if you don't like wiring these are the best things ever uh, i can train just about anybody on these and within about 30 minutes um, they're they're doing almost as good terminations as i've done over the years so if if not better in some cases because once you get the used to it you're yeah they, they becomes really quick termination on these um this also cut saw it cut off about i'd say 15 to 20 seconds per connector when when i started using them so again it cuts down on time really the the biggest thing it cuts down on errors your errors on on doing these terminations go down dramatically so any questions on this tool so far any general questions okay so suppliers this is exciting um, i am a supplier I do sell camera systems completed. I will help design camera systems for you. I'll configure stuff, I'll send it out, I'll ship it out to you. Everything's configured, you just plug it in and go. That is something I do. Um, Alarm.com has cameras for sale on their, on their stuff. Their Alarm.com cameras, you have to be very mindful that Alarm.com is a monthly subscription to a service. So your customer pays you you pay the you pay alarm.com a fee. So let's say I have a camera system I put in for a customer and I get charged 15 bucks a month. I turn around and charge the customer $40 a month for that for that system. It covers all of any kind of trouble they have, they can call me. Um, if they if they want, if they need extra video, I can toss in a little bit for them. But it gives you some monthly RMR. So online camera systems go anywhere. <laughs> Like when you're storing that stuff, it goes anywhere from like 30 to 40 bucks a month uh, is, what, is what you can make off of those systems typically. It depends on, on who your client is, how needy they are. Most of the time with a camera system, at that price, if a customer calls and they're having a problem, I come out, I don't charge them anything to come out, I help them and then I go away. And that, that monthly reoccurring revenue really, really helps out. IML supplies a good portion of uh, certain aspects of my alarm systems. Cameras, I go to them for certain cameras. Allcom Data Supply, I have one here in town. There's another one in Denver, I believe. Um, I don't know how far out across the country they go, but Annexter, I don't do a lot with Annexter Triad anymore. Um, I used to, but they've, they've become real big. They're a little slow on the customer service side. Uh, ADI is a is a is a fairly responsive group. I get my uh, Air Comp Vision cameras from them, and some of the other specialty stuff. Uh, Nelly Security, which I was introduced to, uh, they actually have a lot of really good stuff. If you go to Nelly Security and check out their camera systems, they have branding. So if you want to put your logo on a camera, so I have my Reliant Security logo stamped on cameras. They do that for free. Their cameras are uh, are the Chinese. They're a, they're a they're a Hike Vision uh, sublet. So Hike Vision has there's the Hike Vision brand has all the bells and whistles, and then they sell uh, white label stuff. So they send blank cameras to people, and then people brand them. Nelly's is one of those people that brands it for you. Uh, no additional cost. They're they have really good customer support. More importantly, they're um their web page is really really easy to get into and actually look up the cameras you want you can there's some uh, videos in there too for certain operations um and i just posted the link to uh um i'm, I'm i just posted that link into the chat so 
um, they're they're a great place. Tell them I sent you though. That's really really important. Tell them hey, Reliance Security, John Nolan sent you over to us or to them, and and I've uh, been trying, been kind of trying to get to see if they can come in and, and talk to you guys in one of these uh, more advanced webinars. But we'll we'll see what they do. Um, they they seem to be a really good company. They do a couple other things too. They sell some alarm stuff, a couple access control things. So finding a company that does everything that you want them to do is kind of difficult. Uh, Alarm.com, again, I'm gonna say that them, I, I really love their product. Uh, they have just about everything. They have an access control, they have camera, they have alarm, they have home automation, have business automation. I mean, they, they go through the whole gambit of things, but there are instances where you're gonna need a separate camera supplier. Nelly's is definitely a, a good one for that. Uh, re other resources, obviously Wayne's Lock Shop. Um, we're going to be posting some of these videos in there. Locksmith Nation, obviously uh, the Electronic Access Group, really good group of people to get involved in. And of course, there's Aloha. Aloha does do some other uh, training, I believe, for maybe some of this stuff here. Um, and I put Air Comp Vision here again. I would. Um, if you're if you're looking again for that high-end multi-sensor camera, you can chat with them. They can't sell to you directly, but they're a good resource. So, and then professional business products. So, I have their stickers. If you follow me on Facebook, you've seen their stickers. If you follow Wayne on Facebook, you've seen their stickers. Um, they're they're just really good. The stickers are not cheap. Uh, I think the metal ones are like three or four dollars a piece and then their bubble uh, gel ones are two or three bucks a piece something like that so they're not cheap but then the smaller quantities especially but they're it's it's good to put your brand on stuff uh, again with Nellie's they'll stick a little sticker on the camera for you print it on the camera uh, it gets your name out there so when someone's having a problem with the device and they go to it and they look at it they see your name they see your phone number they call you they don't call me. So that's really important. If you're, if you install the system and they wind up calling your competitor because they didn't know your number, that could be kind of a, a problem, right? So make sure, make sure that your name is on that system. Giving your business cards one thing, but stapling it to the documents and taping it to the uh, recorder will give you return calls. So that's, all the slides I have, I think we're right within that. Uh, we went five minutes over the hour. So it is question time. Feel free to ask any questions. I will answer most of them. Is there any a place I can, when you, are you gonna make more videos and how can I keep up with that? I will be posting those in Locksmith Nation. This introduction is definitely free. I don't know if I'm gonna be charging for the webinars moving forward. Um, these, this does take up quite a bit of my time in both building the presentation, building this presentation took a couple hours, um, documenting stuff like in the future videos uh, where the future, another presentation I have in mind, it's probably gonna be two hours or I might break it into two sections just because it goes through detailed programming um, of, the, of that Nelly security system or the hike vision stuff, whatever you wanna call it. It goes through detailed programming. Um, I mean, it it'll it does a lot of really detailed stuff, but most of that stuff's going to be published to Locksmith Nation. The reason you registered for this class is because I captured your email and other information there too. So I'll probably uh, email, call, something. I'll I'll get that information disseminated to the people who took this class. So, John, have you yes. ever um, used the uh, pair tester after you on terminated? Cat5 cable? Um, I do when I have problems. Okay. So if I have a camera, um, and this goes into, this will be in the advanced class, but if I have a camera that doesn't power up or maybe there's something wrong, again, I always test the cable. I don't care if I put it in. I don't care if the expert in cabling put it in down the road. I don't care. I test the cable. So I do, um, that was not included in that tools list, but it is a handy tool to have. Um, Actually, yeah, that's I, really good. I use it every time I'm terminating a cable myself. But. Well, so are you using those easy connectors? I'm using the easy ones, yeah. Yeah, so you're, you're wasting time. 
I, I test it when there's a problem because when you're talking a, between two and 5% error, it's, it's to me, it's a waste of time to test each, each one, unless you're charging the customer for testing each one and then go for it. But uh, certifying cable or testing the cable after you've installed it to me is, is a waste of time. So, but yes, I do, I do use them in, in uh, troubleshooting circumstances. Anyone else? It's free rain. Turn on your mic, toss in. Let me look at the, maybe the, um, ah, here we go. Uh, which camera brands to use and recommend? Um, I recommend Hike Vision's a really good camera. I wouldn't say that I use one specific camera for any one thing. I use a multitude of different brands. Uh, that Ericont stuff doesn't have, the Ericont doesn't actually make a recorder. Ericon makes the camera, and I and I use a um, oh what is Exact Vision is the recorder on that system. So, but then there's Axis, there's Pelco, um, then Ericon. Those are like premium camera brands. Then you have um, you know you have your High Vision, the Chinese stuff. There's um, gosh, there's a bunch of different cameras. It really depends on for me. It depends on what we're doing and what what's needed like a panoramic camera is going to give us really good view around a corner and below it so i need that camera who makes it who makes a really good one what's the customer's budget so there's a lot of different things like that um more more importantly that question if you if you put it over to what i don't recommend i do not recommend sam's club systems stay away from those they're junk um you're gonna have problems with them so they're you buy something for $500 and it comes with eight cameras, you're asking for problems. That's just, that's a problem in a package. So um, that's, that's what I would, if, if you're wondering what I recommend, I recommend staying away from the Sam's Club stuff or the Walmart stuff or Arlo's okay. I mean, they're, they are what they are, but again, they have the battery issue there. Um, let's see, Mr. Doug, when did you join into this, Mr. Doug? Hey, John. Um, I actually got in 35 minutes late, so I missed virtually everything. Okay. Well, so here's the thing. Um, I have had about four other members that had to cancel. Like, they couldn't make it in because they were either working jobs or they, for whatever reason, they couldn't get in right now. And, you know, they're kind of in your situation. Um, I will actually be holding an impromptu class here probably in about an hour. So I'll, I'll be rerunning through this in about an hour. It's not probably, I'll, I'll post it on Nation, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually re recovering some of this because of I've had enough people have technical issues that and I've got time. So probably here in about an hour, we'll do another one. Hey, do, you, uh, do you have like a software you use for planning out a system or how do you normally plan it out? There are softwares out there. Um, I'll tell you, I've been doing it long enough. I just take blueprints and write on them. So there are softwares out there. Let me pull one up. Um, IP camera planning tool. It's kind of expensive though. Um, this it here no the one that I like is is a little expensive but it does work really well um, let's see camera planning tool and sometimes they push out um, really good information here it is I posted a link in there so ipvm.com is the uh, is the place. I better get rid of this. Um, don't need that password in there anymore. So ipvm.com is a really good tool. They do have a free, like you can try it out kind of thing and it gives you like two or three cameras you can put in. Uses Google Maps, really helpful when you're trying to show a customer kind of what they're gonna be able to see, that kind of stuff. 
um, it'll actually, when you, when you look at that site, um, the other thing it does is if you're using a particular manufacturer that's in their system and they have a lot in their system um, and you start measuring, uh, like putting in different variables, like how far is the camera away from your subject um, or how far does this camera see and you put your subject in its field of view, it kind of gives you an image of what you should be seeing at that distance during the day and then at night. So it's a really, really cool tool for that. So if you're curious, if you're wondering like, well, is a four megapixel camera going to see across this parking lot, which it won't. Um, well, I mean, it will, but it's, it'll be really blurry at the end of it. Or do I need like a 10 megapixel camera or can I get a four megapixel with a, with a 12 millimeter lens or a 32 millimeter lens on it. So when you, when you take that four megapixel number and you add in like a, a 32 millimeter lens, you're you're really zooming in on that on that thing. So four megapixels, hundred or twenty, you know, hundred thirty feet away or something like that, with a thirty-two millimeter lens, you're gonna almost see hair on the guy's face. So, um, so yes, that that's a really good tool. I've used it before. I think it's like a hundred dollars every quarter. So you're talking like four hundred bucks a year for that. Not type. terrible. Yeah, it's not terrible, especially if you're doing a lot of camera systems. And then you want to be able to print these things out and submit it to the customer. I mean, whatever you can do to make yourself different from somebody else is great. Um, when I come out, I'll take photos. And if someone wants something like this, um, again, I have manufacturers to help me out too. So that's where I really kind of rely on them. They have those tools. But more importantly, like, I mean, if you, if you came in and you were planning something out with one of these, you, you stand out from just about everybody. And and most of the time people will select you if you give a good enough presentation. What was the name of that one more time so I can write it down? It's ipvm.com. So India Papa Victor Mike.com. And I did put it in the uh, uh, the text group there too. Oh, wait, I am submitting this to someone privately. What am I doing there? Here we go. Everybody should have that now. Let me post, yeah, post to the Nelly security to everyone too. Work, work that for now. Anyone else? Yeah, John, do you use uh, any of the handheld camera testers and can you recommend a brand for those? Unfortunately, I can't recommend a brand. I, I actually don't use them. Um, here's what I do. I, uh, I <laughs> those things are a couple hundred bucks, first of all. They're very expensive in my opinion. So when I need to see a camera view, I just pop on the phone. I get everything configured. I get it uh, internet access, and then I log into the into the device. If I'm working somewhere where that's controlled, like in a hospital, I just tell the hospital I need that access either on my phone or on your computer, make it happen. And most of the time, the IT department will give you something to be able to adjust those cameras with. Um, I would say if you're shopping around for one of those, though, definitely buy, um, let's see, Com Cables has one. They have a branded one. It seems to work okay. But to me, they're, they're slightly more trouble than they're worth. So I, I typically would use my phone or my iPad and just hop on their Wi-Fi network. Or in some areas, you can set up your own Wi-Fi network. Like with those, um, with the Ubiquiti antennas, I can typically plug that into a switch and then broadcast my own Wi-Fi signal that I log into and and it just works out that way. Okay, so, so, you, so you install everything and then do your aiming and, and fine tuning that way. I do. And then um, for me, the, it, I just do things in steps. I do all my wiring, then I run all my cable, you know, I, I, I terminate everything and install the cameras. So and then my final termination is typically at the switch. So, but there's always ever there's more than one way to do everything. And if if one of those tools is is something you're after, um, just making sure that you have spend spend a good amount on your tool, is is all I can say. So look up the reviews. Uh, some of your vendors will or some of our vendors will have a recommendation. But okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, let's see for the bonus class. Yeah, man. No problem. Uh, meeting link or the same one. 
I'm not sure. I'll probably push out a different meeting link for that one. I don't know if this will expire once I close this out. So. All right, y'all have a good night. You too. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Yeah, and if you guys do have questions you think of later, shoot me a message on Facebook or send me an email or text message me. Those are really good ways to get a hold of me. Thanks for your time, John. Sure, absolutely. And just so the remaining people know, I am still taking questions if you want to ask them. Yeah, thanks again, John. And, and you said you will post the uh, advanced classes on um, Locksmith Nation. Yeah, either that or I'll, or I'll push them out over email, probably both. Oh, okay, so. great. Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely be interested in that. So uh, uh, whenever those are ready, just shoot me an email. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, no problem. Oh, thanks. And thank you again That's for taking your time to do this. Oh, yeah. No, this is, I, I really love uh, teaching. It's it's important that we expand our, our horizons, and this is the only way to do it. So. All righty. Well, you have a great evening. You too. I'm going to go ahead and close out the class. You guys have a great evening too. Thanks. Thanks, thanks again, John. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's up? Oh, thanks again, John. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah, no problem, Jared. We'll yeah, talk bye. to you later, man.